Hello and welcome to the Geg SoCal March 1st monthly meeting. I am Karen Lagola. I am one of the co-leaders of Geg SoCal and I am joined tonight by Nancy Minicotzi and I am also one of the leaders of Geg SoCal. I'm delighted to be here. So even though this is an asynchronous meeting, we still want to keep in touch with you. So here are all the ways you can do it. You can visit our website, you can email us, you can connect with us at our Google group or on Twitter. And all of these links will be in the show notes. So please contact us for anything you like. Absolutely. We are excited to bring you our second asynchronous meeting. And as promised, we are going to talk about Google Slides, which is one of our go-to resources in the Google workspace. We are always on slides. And Absolutely. just- Absolutely. Oh, sorry. Why we love slides. Say, go ahead. Tell them. We're so excited. We We're talking slides. over each other. <laughs> We're so excited. We love slides. And if you remember when we did our favorite things meeting uh, back in uh, November, Karen picked slides and I would have picked slides too, except she already picked it. Huh. <laughs> but I took it. But some of the reasons yes. we love slides is, well, one, we use it every week. We do a newsletter. Some of you may or may not know, Nancy and I also work together outside of Geg SoCal at Beverly Hills High School, and we use slides for our newsletter. So every week we are on slides using it that way. We recommend it to teachers probably on a daily basis for collaborative projects and activities that they can do. Um, it, the list goes on and on and on and on of why we love slides. And you can see that we've also included for you other resources of why others love slides. And let me actually pull those up so that you can see. Oops, I can't do it from there. Oh, there we go. Because we love Eric Kurtz and here on Control Alt Achieve is an incredible list of things you can do with slides that we have attached here. And the other attachment that we have is from Ditch That Textbook and the Ultimate Google Slides Teacher Resource. This one has tons of templates that you can use and you can choose from. So that is a resource for you. They're attached in our slide deck. Right, which will also be linked in the description box below. Um, I'd just like to add one of the reasons, I mean, you can do so much with slides and the reason you can do so much with slides, and I just thought memes, you can also make memes, we didn't include that in there, is that they're so flexible and so customizable. They are collaborative for students. They encourage critical thinking in the sense that you can't put too much information on the slide unless it's a bad slide. Um, so you can really get kids to think about what's important. They can work together. They can work side by side. You can review all their work in one place. They're fun, they're creative. And really, I think it would be very difficult to think of something you couldn't do with slides. With a slide, that's true. And to add to that, just on the student end, it's really easy for them to interact with it, right? So it takes away that piece that the technology might get in the way of the content. It's super easy to use. And if it's a repetitive tool that you use for all of these things, your students get more and more familiar and the content that you get from your students gets better and better because they can focus on that and not about the tool. Absolutely. So now we're going to jump into why we think you will love slides. So we're going to show you some things that we think that you will absolutely love about slides. So one of the things that I use all the time when I am using slides is that I want to add something to my slide deck. And this great option under file lets you import slides from another slide deck. So any slides that you've already created, you can come here and you can choose your slide deck and then you can import it. Now I don't have to import all the slides. Say I'm just looking for a Venn diagram and I knew I already 
selected or created one. I can just import it. But I can also import parts of this. So I used this for the glass castle and now I'm reading another book and I want my students to do the same kind of group work. So I'm gonna import it. You can notice down here that I can keep the original theme or I can say no. And I'm gonna say no, cause this one actually is very um, tailored, customized for the glass castle. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna import these slides. And you are gonna see that those slides now are right here in my slide deck. They pop in and I can then add them or create, change them as I need for this new content. So that is one of the great things that I love about it. Yeah, and also I will say that for our newsletter that Karen mentioned earlier, we use import slides every week because we the reason we do our newsletter and slides is we do one pay one slide per week the idea is that a teacher can look at it in 60 seconds and decide if they need to click on the links to get more information or not but we also want to make past weeks available to them so we don't want to be messing around or editing the slide when teachers might still be looking so what we have is we actually have a draft deck where we write and then once a week, we bring we use import slides to bring our completed slide into the published deck. Yes. So it works really well and it's super easy. Very easy. So another thing that you might see down here in the corner, you see this little box. And this is all about, all about auto fitting your tech. So if I say to, to click, you'll notice that it changes my autofill. So now it's going to, I am so sorry. And it's like clicking all over the place. My computer's decided to do other things. <laughs> um, there we go. So I can customize fill. So you can have it. So now you can see as I type, It will change the size of the box or as I had it set, I don't want to auto fit because I want my students to be able to go in. So I want to create a bigger box to encourage them to type more. If my students see a small box. They might think that's all they have to say. So that's why I have added that. And as you noticed, like it came popped up here under our tools as I was doing it. Um, another tool that I really love. And this one has to do with back to the themes. And there's two ways now that you can work on or change a theme. So if you click on this, you'll notice that I can't change anything up here, but I do have a placeholder. So I added a place where students can upload a photo. So I can upload from my computer. And this would be something that students you know, could do. This one is for Glass Castle. So it was about the theme. I'm trying to look at something I want to upload <laughs> to my, what do I have here? What are these images? Um, you can okay. also insert from uh, searching the web so you can find something on Google. Exactly. Uh, images. Oh, I there did you our gag. And you if you can... right click on that, you can reset it so it will fit. Maybe. Oh, well, it's asking if for the alt text. Go, so go another down. thing that you can do, yeah, reset image. There we go. Yeah. It's just oh, perfect. It going looks lovely. In. And there we have that. So also on this slide. I do have embedded like placeholders. And the way that I did this is I came to slides and I went to edit theme. Now you also can do this under file now, theme builder, and I'll show you that in a minute, but it really is the same functionality. You can do it from either place. And what I did is I came into the slide and once you're in theme builder or edit theme, you can come up and you can insert, and down at the bottom here, you can insert a placeholder for an image, and it gives me the options. I apologize. There we go. 
of what shape it can be rectangle it can be rounded it can be oval i can do body of the text subtitle or a title placeholder and of course that's going to change the size of the text that the students are able to put in depending on how you have that set you can see like the first level here of text is a different size so that will change i usually just do subtitle placeholders when i do it that's what I have in for my three problems, three characters. And I also come in when I'm in the themes and I add any directions that I don't want my students to change or um, that if like I reuse this all the time for different classes, different books that we're reading. So I can come in and decide like, well, for this book, I'm actually going to have them list only two because this is going to be a little bit different. Um, for us, so I'm going to do it that way and I can change my supporting and then I can just come out and you'll see that it has changed. So now it's list two or list three. And the other place I wanted to just show you where you can go is under file and that's where they have. It's I think it's actually under, under view. View, yes. Thunder view and that's where they have team builder and it goes in and it looks the same as the um, okay. edit theme. We've been uh, we we wanted to keep our meeting to 10 minutes and it's already been 11 and a half. So maybe we can just jump forward and check there are um, some special settings on if you'll go back to slide five or it's now slide 10. Um, if you uh, go to the video autoplay settings, you can decide how much of your video is going to show or play when kids come on. Uh, grid view is great for looking at all your students' slides at one time. Highly recommend that you look at that. And if you have Google Classroom and have been using originality reports with docs, now you can use it with slides. Yeah. So, yeah. And we also have included just some themes, places you can go to get themes. If you, um, we showed you how you can actually create your own theme with the theme builder. You can start from a blank slide and add anything, or you can go to any one of these sources and find some really awesome templates that you can then adapt for your own needs. Absolutely, and the, they are all free. The only thing that they ask because they are Creative Commons is that you leave the last slide in um, or it, it's usually the last slide, but not always, to provide credit to the creators. Yes. And with and that, we're going to say goodbye for today. Thank you once again for watching us. Next time, we're going to talk about calendar, and we hope you have a great rest of your evening. See you in April. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.